So, after months and months of debating it and fighting over it, uh, whether the big question remained. So, but, however, yesterday, uh, Hasbro officially confirmed it. Yes, it is, in fact, Bumblebee is, in fact, a reboot. That's right, they are, this is the official, re they've turned the Bumblebee prequel into the official Transformers reboot of the franchise. Yeah. Um, it was kind of left up in the air. Um, it was very much left up in the, um, uh, in the air for the longest time of, uh, would this be a reboot or is it just going to be a prequel to this? It, it was really hard to say, um, uh, for the longest time, everyone was thinking, you know, everyone was fighting over, you know, it was this, no, it was that, it, and, but Hasbro stepped in and went, nah, guys, it's officially a reboot, which I guarantee you, if this movie flopped, if this movie flopped in the box office, and it did, in fact, do well, uh, well enough to earn uh, another sequel and what have you, uh, and a new franchise, they would have easily just said, if this movie flopped, no, it was just a prequel, and that this is the official end. We're this is not the reboot. We'll do uh, the reboot another time. Yeah, this this is just ignore it, kids. So yeah, this was kind of a so yeah they've turned Bumblebee into a soft reboot, which was yeah this whole movie was more or less to see if they could get away with making it, um, you know if they could get away doing such a thing, which I'm fine with. I'm totally fine uh, with it. I really enjoyed the Bumblebee movie. Um, I really dug it, and yeah, the idea of doing like an Optimus Prime solo movie and, you know, Hasbro's now coming out with a whole slew of other films, um, coming soon, such as, um, such as, uh, they're doing another G.I. Joe movie, they've announced Micronauts, uh, another MLP, you know, My Little Pony film, and Dungeons and Dragons. Those will be the slew of the first few movies. They haven't said, like, uh, for any... It's funny, when they announced their uh, first slew of movies for 2020, uh, you know, for the tw early 2020s, they didn't say anything about Transformers, which makes me wonder, man, they were really hanging back uh, to see if Bumblebee did well. They really wanted to see if Bumblebee could do well in the, you know, after uh, how bad Last Night did and how everyone just kind of just hated the Mike, the Bayformers for the longest time. So I feel like that was the case, is that why we didn't see when um, when Hasbro announced a whole slew of movies, like I said, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, also, of course, um, uh, MLP, you know, My Little Pony, and uh, Micronauts and G.I. Joe, which is also going to be a reboot, which is odd because I believe, like, wasn't the original idea was that it was going to be a Snake Eyes origin film? Uh, but now, no, the, apparently it's going to be a full-on G.I. Joe film, which I'm surprised at. I was like, okay, um, G.I. Joe reboot, that's fine. Uh, get Larry Hama to get... Yeah, really, you just need Larry Hama to write the script, because if you, for those who don't know who Larry Hama is, Larry Hama is the guy who made G. I. J., the G.I. Joe comics from the Marvel era, and he's still doing them in the IDW comics. I think the Larry Hama G.I. Joe run is kind of in its own continuity, so, yeah, you don't really need to read, like, Revolutions and what have you. You just need to go in there and read, um, the Larry Hama run of, um, the, you know, the Larry Hama run of, um, uh, of, of G.I. Joe. Why did the name get away from me? Damn. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about this for a second. Now, I know what you're thinking, already, uh, already out the gate with the Megatron thing. The Megatron thing, I think, was kind of like they were again. It gives credence to they were they were really just kind of playing it by ear with this movie of why they didn't have Megatron and just have him, you know, because in in the Bayformer timeline, he's already on Earth and crash landed and you know, left on Earth uh, alone. So that's why you didn't see him. But you could easily just retcon it and just say, oh well, Megatron was on a deep cover mission or he was you know wounded and you know needed some time to repair himself. So yeah, you could just do that. The other thing is, yeah, um, did you see that whole Cybertron scene in Bumblebee? Yeah, do that for an entire movie and everyone will love you, Hasbro. This is how you do it. Also, keep Travis Knight on the projects. Keep Travis Knight uh, on here. He's an excellent director. He is an amazing uh, writer and creator. Of course, he did Kubo and the Two Strings. He was also, a, he's one of the heads at Lakia. Yeah, it was a good call to have him do uh, the Bumblebee movie. 
So, have it, and it's clear that he knows his stuff, his way around Transformers. So, for the sake, for all of our sakes, just, just, just keep him on the projects. Just keep him working on those projects. Now, the other thing is, um, where do you go with this new time, you know, with this new universe, this new pseudo-reboot universe you've, um, you've created? This new pseudo-reboot universe you have, uh, forged. Um, it's really hard to say of where you could go. Uh, actually, no, it's not. It's not actually hard. I take that back. It's actually pretty easy. You look at what what happened in, uh, in Bay, you know, with the Bayformer movies and just say, oh, don't do that. Okay. That's, the fans don't want, they want more Bumblebee stuff and not more Bayformers. We, we could totally do that. We could, yeah, we could work around this. This, this should not be hard. This, this is not hard. So, yeah, just look at what Bay, what Michael Bay did and do the opposite. That's all I ask. Because on, honestly, you could even do a movie without humans. Yeah, I think you could, Transformers is a film you can do without the need of other human characters. Yeah, human characters have been a part of, trans, of the Transformers franchise, but really, they... They've been kind of, like, you don't need them. I mean, the Transformers themselves have enough human emotion and enough character arcs for them to really carry a film on their own. I mean, hell, Megatron and Optimus' story is very much akin to Xavier and Magneto. You could do, like I said, when they talked about an Optimus Prime solo film, just set it on Cybertron before the war began and see that road of, you know, him and Megatron being friends and eventually leading to the for, you know him becoming a pr optimus becoming a prime and megatron becoming a genocidal dictator it's uh you know it writes itself it really does um write itself although admittedly that's probably what they're going to do for the netflix cartoon that's probably what they're going to do for the uh transformers netflix show uh in all honesty um I would say that this, you know, this film, these new set of films could probably do well in the, you could actually set them in the 80s, really make them like the live action G1 cartoons. You could honestly get away with putting these show, you know, putting these, uh, this franchise in the 80s and no one would bat an eye, like making the, and besides, we're still riding the nostal the 80s nostalgia wave, so why not, um, you know, why not uh, put them in there, you know, put them in this series and let the, you know, let it just run wild. Just let it run wild in the eight, set in the 80s. Let them have their eight, like a, their 80s looks like you did in the, in the new bump, in the Bumblebee movie. And yeah, everything will be fine. Everything will be just fine. I promise you, I, I promise you Hasbro, people will buy your films. That, you know, people will buy your films on DVD, they will go see it in the theater if you just listen to the fans like you, like Travis Knight and the rest of the crew did for Bumblebee. It still had its hiccups, but I still think it's the best Transformers film we've had ever. We've had the, well, okay, let me back up. It's the best live action Transformers. I was like, oh yeah, the eight, you know, the film, the animated film, the one true Transformers film. So yeah, animated film top, Bumblebee second, man! I man, I can't believe I almost said that this was the Bumblebee was the best when I was like, oh yeah, the full-on animated film, live-action film, Bumblebee's got it. Anima animated wise, it's Transformers the movie, <laughs> no doubt about it. So yeah, uh, as a Transformers fan, I'm very much looking forward to this. I think this is really cool. Uh, you know, again, it's kind of it was it's kind of odd that they they were playing it by ear, and this is going to be how they reboot the Transformers franchise. But you know what? I think a lot of us were expecting this to begin with, and again, they were just I think they were just playing it by ear. But yeah, what can you do? Film studios do this uh, more often than than you think. Remember, that's how GI Joe re if GI Joe Retaliation did good, it was going to be a soft reboot from there. And it's yeah, in its own right, it was its own soft reboot. So you guys tell us in the comments below. What do you guys think of Transformer of the of Bumblebee being the official Transformers reboot film? And where do you think the Transformers films will go from here? Do you guys want to see like more Autobot and Decepticons getting solo films? Uh, do you want to see like uh, War for Cybertron stuff like they're doing in the Netflix cartoon? Uh, yeah, there's just so many ways you can go now with it. Also, do you want to see 
uh, just Transformer characters, just Autobots and Decepticons, or do you want to see, you know, uh, like more, more, uh, you know, more just, just Cybertronians, or do you not, and do you not want to see humans? Just comment below, let us know. And if you're new here, remember to Hulk smash that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers. I'm DPZ, and on behalf of everyone here, we will see you right here, uh, right here once more in the universe.